Hello, my name is Chris Wright from One Spatial. Here at One Spatial, we believe that Geocortex Essentials helps you do more with ArcGIS web mapping technologies faster, at less cost, and at less risk, and we believe better. One Spatial is the UK and Ireland distributor for Geocortex Essentials. We have a wide ranging, large, and growing portfolio of users, including the Environment Agency, United Utilities, Lambeth Borough Council, and Royal Sun Alliance, to name but a few. Hello, today I'm going to be talking about running reports in the HTML5 viewer. Running reports in the HTML5 viewer is slightly different to running reports uh, under Silverlight. Under Silverlight, once you have added your reports to your site, then there is a button that you can select um, which presents you with your reports. You then select the objects that you want and you get back your report. Under the HTML5 viewer, uh, a workflow is used to actually run a report. Adding the report to the site is, is very much the same. So let's start off by adding our report. So if I open up my manager here and I go to my test site, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add um, a report to my building asset layer. So I'll edit the layer, I'll go to the reports tab and I'll add a report. Give the report a name, give it an optional description and if I want to include feature maps. Then I go to my resources tab, uh, my report templates tab and I select the building report A4 portrait. So my report is now added to my layer. Optionally I can select a format that I want to output the report in uh, and set up some print settings. But essentially now I've added my report to my layer. Now at this point in time we're going to create a workflow that will need some input from the layer. So if I go back to my layer here and I click this button here to open the rest endpoint I need to remember the map service ID, which is 3, and the layer ID, which is 1. And if I go back to my, my manager, I can see that my report ID is 0. So I've got a map service ID of 3, a layer ID of 1, and a report ID of 0. What I do now is I'm going to open up my workflow designer. Uh, and I'm going to open up an existing workflow that I've already built uh, and then I'll walk through the workflow for you and explain each part of the workflow. So I have uh, an individual report workflow here so I'll open this workflow and you can see that the uh, workflow consists of seven steps so let's go through these steps one at a time. So if I expand the initial variable sequence you can see that I've defined three variables. I've defined the map service ID, the layer ID and the report ID and these variables are going to be assigned to three arguments the map service argument, the layer argument and the report argument and down here if I expand the arguments box you can see that I've got three arguments uh, corresponding to the above which are all going into my workflow and our strings. And the variable section has three variables again map service ID, layer ID and report ID these are also strings. So when we add the workflow to the site we'll be prompted to add in the arguments in this case the map service ID, the layer ID and the report ID and the first thing that the workflow does is create variables from these arguments. The next step is to display a captured geometry. So this is an activity where the user is prompted to capture a geometry on the map. And you can see that I've set the workflow container to be reports, the title to be reports. I've set a message to say select a report area. And I've set the geometry type to be point, polyline, freehand line, polygon and rectangle. Uh, and this is because these match the ones similar to those uh, in the Silverlight viewer when you capture geometry to report on. Down here I've got some geometry instructions which is a string which is basically saying select an area on the map using one of the tools below. Your reports will be created once your selection is complete and you have pressed the generate button. This is just a piece of information for the user 
to help them capture the geometry. And what it returns to us once you've captured geometry is a, a variable called htm underscore capture geometry, which if we have a look in the variable section here, is an Esri ArcGIS client geometry dot geometry. So we're getting passed back a, a point, a line, a polygon. The next three steps in my workflow are effectively optional, but what they do is they replicate what happens in the Silverlight reporting mechanism. What these steps do is they go away, find the objects that are available for the report using the query task, and then basically run a command to show those objects. So it displays the objects that we're going to report against. So the first activity here, given our map service ID, uh, will return us the map service URL. We can then use that map service URL in the query task and build up a query using the layer ID to return uh, the objects that are captured inside the geometry uh, that we digitized earlier. And then the run external command just highlights the feature set that is returned by the query task. So, having optionally highlighted the objects on the map, the next thing is to use the activity report to actually run the report. If I expand this box here, you can see that there's a number of options we can add, but we only really need six options added. So the first one is our map service ID. The second one is the layer to report against. And then we have the report ID, which is the report uh, that we've loaded. Then we have a geometry, so the captured geometry from the second step. Then the show open dialog will basically, if set to true, We'll put a, a box up that allows us to download the report. And then down here we have the output format of the report. Uh, and this is just a string and I've put in PDF. Uh, I guess optionally you could add another variable, which would be the report format that you added when you add the report to your site. Sorry, add the workflow to your site. Uh, and then you could pass this parameter in here. So when run, the report will be generated and then we'll have a download link in PDF format to just download that report. Once the close button in the, in the workflow is, is pressed, we then run another external command just to clear the highlighted objects. So, having created our workflow, let's add our workflow to our site. So back here in my site, I go to workflows, and I add a workflow. Uh, I call the workflow uh, run report uh, and then I select the workflow XML from my resources workflows folder. It is now prompting me to add in these arguments and from earlier we know that the map service ID is 3, the layer ID is 1 and the report ID is zero. So my workflow is now added to my site. So what I now need to do is add that workflow to my HTML5 viewer. So I've got an HTML5 viewer here, which is the latest 2.3 version. So I edit my HTML5 viewer, and I'm going to add it to my I want to menu. So I click on the I want to menu, and I click add menu item. I'm going to add some text, which is I'm going to say run a building report. The command is run a workflow by ID. And the parameter is run report, as shown here. I click on ID, sorry, on OK. I then promote this workflow to the top of the I want to menu. I click save my site. I can now run up the viewer. So I'll launch the viewer in a browser. Once my viewer is displayed, 
I can go to my I want to menu and I can run a building report. So I initially get prompted to select a report area. If I press select by point and then click on the map, I then need to click on generate. The building is highlighted that the report is going to be generated against. And then I get a click here to view my report. And there is my report. If I close the workflow, you can see that the selection is cleared. If I run the workflow again, and this time I use a rectangle select, and I select these two buildings here and hit the generate button. Again, two buildings are highlighted and when I click here you can see I've got the first building there um, and then I've got a second building here. So that's how to implement reports using workflows in the HTML5 2.3 viewer. If you'd like a copy of the workflow, please contact us at One Spatial and we'll be only too happy to supply it to you. Thanks for listening. I hope you found the video useful. You can get in touch with us by using the details on the screen. Finally, keep your eyes and ears open for more videos to come.